Hi, I'm Doug from the Vineyard Showroom. You've probably seen us uh, over the years at the Kingpin shows and uh, today for the inspiration platform, I wanted to speak a bit, little bit about what we do. So welcome to the artistry of vintage design inspiration. So the title's meant as a joke, very firmly tongue in cheek and uh, far too grandiose a heading for what we do. But I do hope that you see a little beauty and magic in the pieces we put together, which hopefully will spark some inspiration for the people watching. So Kingpins, we've been lucky enough to be involved with for a number of years. It's a highlight of our calendar usually. We put a lot of time and energy into setting up the rigs that we show. And this time around, we're gonna let you see some of the full process and ideas that go into what we put together. And hopefully you're gonna enjoy. Thank you. So usually when we start to build out a new concept, we'll begin with just one ingredient. One piece from our archive or a mood or a color, a point of reference in time, it might be a place, or in this case, everything comes from a simple black and white photograph. Here we see a North Nevada desert scene. A dramatic sky hangs over the mountains. A woman clad in double denim with a simple white shirt the jacket oversized, not hers, perhaps a boyfriend's or lover's. She's looking nervous, unsure of herself, and to her left we see an old rolling boom mic. The photograph is of course a behind the scenes image from The Misfits, a classic, a beautifully filmed anti-western, directed by John Huston, taken by Magnum photographer Eve Arnold. The actress, needing little introduction, is of course Marilyn Monroe, captured in all her beauty and insecurity off camera while learning lines in what will tragically be her final completed movie. So the last 13 years or so, when we've been working on a design concept, whether that's for a movie or for a fashion house, we will revert often to movies for inspiration. This has always felt right and natural to me as it was undoubtedly a love of films and westerns in particular that started a passion for denim and vintage clothing. The Misfits is not just one of my favorite films in itself. The behind the scenes story is hypnotic and the photographs are as poignant as they are heartbreaking. And I'm sure they'll be familiar to many of you regardless of whether or not you've seen the film. Director John Huston's friendship with Magnum founder Robert Kappa brought about the project on the Misfits set, which saw seven Magnum photographers documenting the film's progress. And this undoubtedly helped the film become a classic. Arthur Miller, a screenwriter, pens his goodbye love letter to his soon to be estranged wife, Marilyn Monroe, in what would be her last completed film before her tragic overdose. Her love interest in the movie, the King of Hollywood himself, Clark Gable, would suffer a heart attack just two days after filming completed, dying 10 days later. The third big name Hollywood star, Montgomery Cliff, was described by Munro as being the only person I know in even worse shape than I am. Much, much more has been written about the production of this film, but it is the Magnum photographs that we will return to. They have always been a rich source of inspiration as they captured what to me was the golden age of denim. Every wardrobe piece is a classic. So our inspiration comes from Marilyn. And for the rig we're gonna build for you guys, it's all about the jacket. I love the scale of it on her, the slouchy shoulders, very much a boyfriend fit if you like. But the jacket itself is an undoubtable all-time classic. A 1950s blanket-lined Lee Model 101J, obviously a Storm Rider, which is, uh, in my mind, the definitive cowboy's jacket, instantly recognizable by its corduroy collar. The example that we're showing here is really interesting. It was acquired fairly recently by us 
from the previous owner, who was Billy Duffy, lead guitarist of the Cult. He uh, picked this jacket up in a second-hand store back in the late 80s in California and wore it often on his Harley. Now, I love the deconstructed look of the jacket. When we show it inside out, the blanket lining around the arms has been removed. And when we reverse it, we love the way this exposes the denim in contrast when it's shown inside out. So, opening scene. For Rig One, the star of the show is the Lee 101J jacket. The cut sleeves reversed and buttoned up, the denim contrasting with the blanket. This is the kind of overall thematic we're going to run through the whole set of rigs. Here we've rigged it out with a pair of Levi's 501s, double X's, hidden rivets, stylist's own, they're mine, so these aren't actually for sale, but they were at hand and we like the look of them with the jacket. The 1950s knit zip up is uh, Canadian. It also bounces in and out of my closet, to be honest, um, and we've matched it with a washed down bandana at the neck. Rig two. The worn and frayed blanket lining on this denim chore jacket, probably circa 1950s, has a real vivid pink horizontal stripe, which we loved and just felt it deserved to be seen. So once again, reversing the jacket, we explore further this combination of blanket lining exposed against the denim, where you can see through it in places. The pink of the blanket stripe paired with the antique serape draped over the shoulder. Because there are no rules, we've got a 70s tie-dye t-shirt underneath and this pairs with a late 19th century French work pants that we find really interesting. They're made of a fabrics like a flax hemp, kind of maybe a little bit of linen in their mix. They've been really naively patched and lined. So this continues the thematic of the hidden threadbare visual where layers are exposed and the inside is out. And the items are deconstructed either through thought or from wear or, or from design. Rig free. Here we have a pair of women's 1950s denim work pants with a side zip. Once again, these have been reversed, worn inside out with the printed plaid cotton lining, which we think works really well with the thick denim turner. We've taken a small riveted child's chore jacket, also lined as can be seen at the cuff turn up here. And we restyled it, imagining it as a, a cropped or shrunk down women's denim jacket. Once again, worn over a 60s tie dye t-shirt. And we finished the look off with a First Nations blanket and a purple washed down bandana. So for Rig 4, we've taken one of the pieces I'm slightly obsessed with at the moment. This is a 1940s pink British military camo smock. Uh, I think we've written about it in our second book, if any of you have it. If not, it's available on our website. We've uh, hand dyed this with natural indigo for a project that we're doing for Selfridges London at the moment. We felt that the cloudy mood sat against the backdrop of our uh, canvas. We're trying to attempt to kind of recreate the skyline from the photograph. The batik treatment that we've used here leaves a tie-dye effect, which continues the theme from the vintage t-shirts that we've used throughout the rigs. And here we've layered it with a beautiful set of 1940s Lee long L on the branding work bibs that are beautifully broken down and naively patched. So the grand finale, our visual ode to the misfits, a tale of love, horses, denim, and the evils of capitalism, assemblage in objects found. We should be showing you in Amsterdam, but we hope you've enjoyed uh, sharing it with us uh, digitally on the Kingpins platform.
It's our gift to all our denim misfit friends out there. So I think that's a wrap. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and got a little insight into what we do and the creativity behind our processes and the rigs we put together. And I hope what inspires us has in turn inspired you. And the final rig is of course a, a present to all our misfit denim friends out there. So thanks again.